Just a short video today to talk about probe compensation and uh, how things have changed a little bit with uh, modern scopes uh, compared to the way that uh, we traditionally did things. Now probe compensation is one of those things that uh, most people forget about but uh, is really kind of important. Uh, the traditional 10x probes like this old P6139 uh, here uh, have a compensation adjustment available through that little hole and the process is you'd you know, hook the probe up to this, the scope channel and hook the probe into the calibrator or compensation uh, connection and take a look at the waveform and we can see from this waveform here that the probe is not properly compensated we want to adjust the compensation to get that uh, square wave to be uh, perfectly square and flat and we can see as we adjust it we can be over or under compensated and when you get it just right and get a really nice looking square wave then you know that that probe is now properly compensated for that scope. Now if you move this probe from one you know, scope to another the input capacitance of other pr other scopes might be different and the probe might need to be recompensated. It's one of those things that people forget about but um, it is kind of important to ensure that you get accurate amplitude measurements at different frequencies. Now the newer scopes and newer probes uh, handle compensation a little bit differently. This uh, new Tektronix MD03000 includes four uh, 10x passive probes. These happen to be uh, TPP1000s, which are 1 gigahertz passive probes, 3.9 picofarads of loading. But if you take a look carefully at the body of the probe here, there are no compensation adjustments. So the compensation is actually handled all automatically within the scope. And the process is actually quite simple. Connect the, the probe up and uh, can then connect the probe to the compensation signal just like we did with the uh, traditional passive probe and uh, we'll go take a look at that uh, compensation signal just adjust the, the scope down here a little bit and, uh, and we can see it's probably it's not too bad there's a little bit of rounding you know on that lower edge of the uh, the signal but it's not compensated properly so uh, let's go do that bring up the channel menu and uh, if we use the more button here and scroll down to probe setup uh, we can see that uh, the scope knows that a TPP1000 probe was attached it also knows the serial number of that probe it actually reads that right out of the probe and it knows and it basically says the compensation status is default which means that compensation had not been run on this probe yet so we simply uh, you know, hit the button here to tell it to compensate for the probe just gives you some uh, instructions on how to connect the probe and what it'll do and hit OK to compensate the probe and it'll just go make the measurements internally and properly compensate that probe give you a nice uh, flat response over the frequency range uh, of the probe uh, so the nice thing is that the scope will remember that compensation status so if I go back to that menu I know for that uh, serial number probe now that this probe has been compensated and uh, it remembers that on a per probe and per channel basis and the reason for that is that it at the bandwidth that these scopes can reach like a gigahertz even minor changes in the uh, input capacitance to the channels for example might make a minor change to the frequency response of the probe at a couple of hundred megahertz so by customizing and remembering the compensation status for each probe for each channel will ensure that you get good accurate results regardless of which probe you use on which channel that you use it. So you do uh, want to take the time when you get a brand new scope like this to take the time to take all of the probes that you have and compensate them on each channel. It only takes a few minutes uh, and you don't have to set up the scope you know, for that particular channel, I just simply hook up the probe to the channel, select that channel, go to probe setup, and hit OK. We don't have to be triggered on the signal or anything like that. The probe will just get compensated. So now that's ready to go on channel 2. So you simply run through each probe on each channel. You do it once, and now the scope will remember for that probe uh, what the compensation factors are. This will ensure that uh, regardless of which probe you use and on which channel you use it, you're going to get good high fidelity wideband results uh, with those probes. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Hope you learned a little something about uh, proper probe compensation and how it's done on the modern scopes.